Boys and girls, welcome to the Broski Doodles podcast. With you, as always, Kiko Flo, Kiko Cervantes, always keeping it real at any moment, at any time, always with you. And today, joining me, my cousin, and pretty much one of my favorite persons in the world, Fear, Adrian, what to do? Talk to me. What's up, everybody? How you doing, Kiko? I'm chilling, chilling here, Sunday evening for you is a sunday afternoon but yeah all good man i got the vibes with me la vibras la vibra yeah. but you know what gives me the bad vibra what gives you the bad vibra tell me I, I recently saw a movie with my girlfriend it's one of those sad movies where somebody has like a disease and no one can cure and it's like like the whole odyssey mm -hmm. of how that person ends up dying it's a horrible but then you know at the end it's like a message of oh you gotta enjoy life and shit but it's like <sighs> We know of people that, you know, in, you know, in the, in the recent times, because of the situation, have passed, and and in general, li life is a fucking struggle. Life is is a fucking tragedy. It's a motherfucker, so, eh? It's a motherfucker, eh? And then you watch these movies, and they're supposed to be like, you see, you see how brittle life is. You see, it's be but it's beautiful. No, it, it makes me feel horrible. I'm already depressed. You piece of shit. <laughs> I don't need this movie to remind me. This is supposed to be a yeah. feel-good story. She has cancer. He has cancer. And it's not cured for any of them. So they're going to love each other until they die. Look, they still have a smile on their face. They're still persevering. Okay? You, yeah, need, no, you need to watch this. You're going to learn. You're just like, you, you don't appreciate shit. And look at these kids. They're going through cancer. And they, 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 they manage. Kiko, you need to watch this, okay? Okay, cry. Yeah, you need to cry here. I know. No, but like my life is horrible. Like I'm away from my family. Like things are already bad. And it's, no, but this is worse. And you need to see it. So yeah, every day you cry. And if you I don't, don't know, cry, like, you're an asshole. No, no, it, it does make me cry. That's why I want to watch them. <laughs> because they're super sad. Like I don't know. It's like there's Which one some did you of see them. With her? What? Which one did you see with her? Um. What's this one? Um, oh, who's it with? Like, it, like, I, she started watching it. And halfway, I was like, yeah, I'm not watching this because this is going <laughs> to depress me. It was like an Argentinian movie. And the movie started with like this girl with no hair in the in like a bed. And she has chemo. And she's like recording some shit for her kid for when she's gone and all this shit. And it's just like, oh, okay. This is how I like <laughs> to spend my Sunday evening before I go to sleep. Th this and start is my doing. week off. <laughs> Why don't you put a, a, a noose near my bed in case fucking I get inspired? You know what I mean? Like, like no, bro. Like, life is horrible already. So, I don't want to... I don't know. What What do you think about these movies? Like, there, there, there's this one... So something about the stars. Yeah, The Fault it? in Our Stars. Yeah. The, the yeah, Fault yeah. in Our Stars. It's supposed to be a book and it's like two of them and they love each other and they go to Amsterdam and we're gonna get cancer and it's super sad uh, but yeah watch it it's, there's art here yeah they're in a in a ward in a hospital where all the kids teenagers they all have cancer and i think uh she had a cancer where that affected her lungs um to the point where she couldn't get any, near anyone because she was like immunocompromised and if she got some bacteria like chances of her dying just shoot up i don't know what type of cancer it was but um but yeah man the whole movie was depressing as hell she can't get near anyone she can't hug anyone and i guess the beautiful part of it is that she falls in love with um a guy there who also has cancer and he has the right attitude if you can have a right attitude going into it or she does i don't know one of them is is very positive about the situation and whatnot yeah there's always one that's positive and like super like come on this is part of life and then there's the other one that's like, no, it's super unfair. Fuck this. But then like, and I'm, I'm not making yeah. fun of like this diseases. Like I actually don't like the movies because they're really sad and, and they're about real shit. And, and maybe they have a good intention of making them. But for me, it's just like, it doesn't bring me any value. I want to watch a movie that makes me laugh or that makes me think, but I don't want a movie that makes me like, <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. So I'm reminded once again that life is very short and at any moment it could end. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna go make a sandwich. <laughs> like, like oh. if I didn't think about that enough, right? 
Yeah, like if I didn't think that enough when I'm fucking eating a pizza to my face and I'm thinking, hmm, maybe my cholesterol level is not a healthy level, you know? No, I, no, I have to also think about some crazy shit appearing out of nowhere, and then you know, and you, you have, have no control. Hollywood on. actors is trying to portray to me the fucking, you know, tragedies of life. Get the fuck out of here! <laughs> the fuck out of here! Fuck out of here! Why are you gonna make fuck movies like that? Fuck out of here! No, so, they do have a beautiful message to them. And, like, they give you insight into how people do go through those things because it's very real diseases. Um, I just, yeah, now that, now that I'm remembering the movie, she's, like, super anal about when she needs to take her medications and then she's pushing this kid who doesn't give a fuck and he's, like, trying to die as, like, as fast as possible or doesn't really care because, like, what's the point? So then she gets on his case and then... Like, at one point in the movie, they escape the hospital together, and then they come back. And, spoiler alert, one of them dies. Oh, and really? I, I didn't remember this. You're not going to watch uh, it anyway. <laughs> or if yeah, you have. I mean, I, no, I, I remember watching it and remember, like, oh, okay. This is super, this is super uh, adding value to my <laughs> life. Uh, fuck that. No, I don't like any of those movies. There's a bunch of movies like that where it's like, Nah, don't fuck I, put all these fucking movies. And they think it's like art. Like It's beautiful because you have to see it. Now, I like movies that portray things that happened in the past, like historical movies. You know, um, I, I, I've been watching a lot of war movies, submarine movies. Fucking love those, you know. Yeah, like 19, 1917. I don't know if we saw that one. That one was really World good. World War I. Crazy movie. From the beginning fucking, to the end, it was nonstop. Fucking amazing, and it's, it's it's shot in this one take. Yeah, uh, yeah, it seems like they did it all. <laughs> we gotta wrap this up in five hours. Let's do it. No, I mean, obviously, it wasn't filmed all in one take. It was segments, but they did the camera, effects yeah. in a way so that it always looks like it's one shot. But there were very long scenes where they actually did one shot, and it was insane. Like there's a famous scene where he's going through the the battle trenches yeah and then he has to get out like that whole thing was done one shot and they were able to do so because now we have the possibility of getting a cameraman inside very small places because cameras now are smaller so they're able to to get better scenes in that sense which is i hear they're gonna make uh, the new a new jurassic park with the original people oh shit did not know that. What's that? Oh, fuck, I forgot the uh, the main actor's name. That's crazy. Are they going to make it separate than the Chris Pratt trilogy that they have going on? Or yeah, are they going to combine both? Or who knows? Or maybe they come back and they're like, oh, the we're scientists. bringing the old crew back. And then they join in with Chris Pratt. Although I don't know if Chris Pratt is canceled because he's Christian. Mm. So I don't know. He's like yeah, super... He he has his own issues yeah he going thought about with... the christian patriarch so <laughs> i don't know about that but uh god forbid right there's also if i'm not mistaken in the, to this year we have john wick 4 and matrix 4 coming out on the same day that boy keanu reeves still doing Yo, it that boy keanu reeves killing it yeah, what I like about the John Wick series is that he says he's going to keep making them as long as the fans keep watching them. Dude, I don't like those type of movies. And I watched the last one, the third one, and I was like, oh, it's nonstop, like, clack, clack, psh, tch, 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 tch. that <laughs> so it's sort of like, oh, I see how this is not really that deep, but it's super entertaining. Super. <laughs> And it's not those unrealistic, like, Fast and the Furious movies. Yeah, it's, it's it's weird because I would have categorized it there, but it's not. It's like it's like a fictional, you know, explosion, fighting, shooting movie that you know is a bit um, pop, but it's good enough where, like, it stands on its own without being this ca- tacky Fast and the Furious bullshit, you know? Yeah, there's no cars flying out of buildings and landing into another building. And then the rock bringing down a helicopter and throwing it down to the floor. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, yeah, it's no, definitely no, no, more Saturday. real. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in the scope of it being unreal, it's it's plausible, I guess. 
not to that extent, but but yeah. No, he I think he does a lot of the um the scenes, the fighting scenes. He he choreographs a lot of that stuff. There was a movie that he did, The Man of Tai Chi. Uh, it's a lot of just badass fighting. And it's fighting to the death on the ground fighting. And he's like the kingpin that's organizing all this stuff. And yeah, he choreographs all the fight scenes. So I wouldn't be surprised if he does the same for John Wick and for The Matrix. Man, I think he's a badass. Straight up. Yeah, all in all. And he's like a good person too. Like, cool guy. Humble. Yeah, he hasn't gotten canceled yet, so he's doing something right. <laughs> There's a picture of him where like, it's like a fan asked him for a picture. And you can see his hand is like, with the two girls, Very that he, cl- yeah, that he that doesn't one. touch him. Yeah, he's like <laughs> he knows. He's like making sure, like it's separate. Like, yeah, I, I, I ain't falling for this shit. <laughs> it's not happening to me. I know how you did my cousin Vinny. Yeah, I know how you did my cousin Vinny. Fuck that, my cousin <laughs> Vinny back on minis. That was my, that was my homeboy. He used to come through, and now you fucked him over. So now. <laughs> He hasn't worked a, another day in his life after you guys canceled. Yeah, it ain't happening to me. It ain't happening. I got too. I got too much shit. He, got, he actually got, has a super sad uh, cancer movie. Sweet November. Oh, really? Made it back in the day. Um, I forgot who the the actress was. It was like his wife, and it was like a long battle with cancer, and they had a super oh. sad song. I think I was ten when I watched this shit, and I was just traumatized. I just, again, I don't see any benefit from those movies. Um, I used to think they had it, and then it was just like, I, why would I want to cry? Like, I already cry a few times a day as it is. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need this catalyst. <laughs> uh, I, I'm already I, right I, here <laughs> to crying. <laughs> Please like, don't push me over like, the edge. I'm already crying twice after lunch when I have to throw up what I ate. So, <laughs> you know, that, the bulimia, you know, all combined. I just, I just can't, I just can't take it anymore. I just can't take it anymore. <laughs> this is not my definition of a date night. <laughs> Don't like it. Don't want to do it. No, but, um, yeah, bro, that's crazy. Those movies are weird. Did you think as, you're a father, right? As a father, do you think that when you watch movies and shit like that, do you, have you still kept your child, childish like humor? Or do you think that you start becoming someone that likes more that humor? Like you start listening to Tom Segura or Tom Papa more. Um, do you start like watching movies? You know, well, what I like that they're doing now is that they'll make, or maybe they've done it for a while now, but I, I guess I'm noticing it now that I'm watching cartoon movies with my kids, is that they'll throw in a lot of jokes directed towards the uh, the adults that the kids won't necessarily get. And like movies like that, I, I appreciate that they get everybody involved because the kids like the animation and everything that's going on, but only the adults see what's what they're saying and really understand what they're saying. Um. Like the Lego movies, they do a good job of that, catering to to the humor of of older folks. Um, Can you remember an example of an exact of a joke? No, I can't. But but yeah, those type of I, I like how they're they're incorporating that nowadays. Okay, okay. Like for example, like the. They'll have like, what is it, Paw Patrol? Paw Patrol or? Yeah, Paw Patrol. <laughs> Paw Patrol, okay. right? Have, it, it doesn't like, extend to Nickelodeon shows. All right, but <laughs> no, then, no, for no. example, if you're watching one of those things like Paw Patrol, they'll have the Paw Patrol, the little dog, you know, for the kids. And then in the background, somebody will be like, Blue Lives Matter. And like, you'll have like a resonance, <laughs> <laughs> you know, like you have a. <laughs> yeah, I'll be laughing kids, by myself. And also for the kids. political agenda. <laughs> my kids are like what the hell is this guy having to do <laughs> don't worry about that don't worry about that <laughs> no like, there was uh, a movie that I saw recently fuck I'm forgetting at the moment alright alright you'll remember but they, they are bringing politics a lot into cartoons they are like 
Yeah. Like watching Nickelodeon, it's funny that you say the Blue Lives Matter. They have a lot of uh, Black Lives Matter commercials and little things that they do in, in Nickelodeon. They have Martin Luther King's granddaughter. She's like an advocate for civil rights and whatnot. So they have a, a, a black cartoon from a famous show in Nickelodeon from The Loud House. The show like of a, a, a brother that has like seven sisters or whatever the hell. So they have that kid interviewing um, uh, Martin Luther King's granddaughter. It's like, oh, so what are your beliefs? Or what do you advocate for? And what do you do in your free time? So mm-hmm. it's like her way of spreading the message and, and for kids to become informed about all the social issues that are going on. Okay. Yeah. It is weird, right? That they are putting this in like cartoons. When, like, yeah, whether back or not, in the day, I, cartoons. I agree with, with what they're doing is, is irrelevant. Just the fact that they're doing it and like having that conversation with children, not like with the consent of parents, they're just putting out the message that they want to put out is, I, I don't like that. Do you find yourself... Well, this is an interesting topic. Do you find yourself seeing this more and more, like on the content that your kids watch, where like you feel they're and you feel they're being indoctrinated? And this has nothing to do with like the topics we're talking about, if if they're good or bad. We're not debating that, but it, it is the case that there are certain uh, agendas that are being pushed in these things, right? Like, um, is that something you you see more and more, uh, even at school maybe as well? Well, it's, yeah, I've definitely seen a lot more and more. I just don't know how they can do it without being biased. For example, uh, my son is in fourth grade, right? So he's learning about uh, the way the Constitution works, and it just so happens we had the election um, last year. And so in class, they're talking about how Joe Biden is the new president, Kamala Harris is the vice president. So they they take it and they start talking about the fact that she's the first ever um, African-American vice president the United States has ever had, which is, they're all facts. And that's fine that you want to, that you tell them. Um, So I I haven't necessarily sat in to listen to what they're saying about her and what political views that they're telling the children. But um, it is interesting that they are getting a race and and more social issues involved in in kids' lives than I think ever before. Just with the yeah, I didn't. I never had this discussions when when we were growing up. Uh, like we, we we didn't have it at school. You didn't have any push towards anything really. I mean, only towards like drugs. You had that lion that said no to drugs. <laughs> yeah, you would appear every year. And then you yeah. see that lion tripping balls at ultra music festival, fucking doing the sickest moves. They're like. <laughs> Weren't you in my school not last yeah. week? Say no to drugs. And, and then he's fucking serving beans in the fucking festival. You know, like. <laughs> he served it to you. <laughs> and then when you say, he said to now, but, you know, for today. I think that's where so, he picks up his clientele. He just makes eye contact with all the, you know, the kids that sit in the back in school and they're like, all right, I'm say, say no. And then he goes, but, but you know. <laughs> but you, you, you don't you have know. to say no. <laughs> okay. Shh. <laughs> Plead the fear. Just wear the shirt. <laughs> Anyone who wore the shirt did drugs at some point. Yeah, yeah like the sh- the shirt was part of like a subculture. If you had the dare shirt, is because you dare to do drugs. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> right. <laughs> it was like you got to survive. It was a, way, it was a way for everyone to identify where where they belong. Yeah. Right, like where I, you could you trade drugs with. Weed. Right, 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 right. <laughs> the dealers right. wore the shirts on Fridays. <laughs> it was like a so, thing. You know, man. going into the weekend, hey, yeah, he's wearing the shirt. All right, I got you. All right, all right. What's good, dog? I got you. Yeah, they would come in every year, dude. Every year that line was there without fail. I don't think he's around anymore. Nah, dude, apparently he got into opiates and <laughs> <laughs> he, 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 he's he got really facing 25 to life. <laughs> he had an overdose, you know what? <laughs> <laughs> and no one took over. They didn't know how to replace him. They didn't know how to no, tell the kids. Uh, yeah, so I don't know who's, who's going to save my kids from that. There's no advertising. Apparently, the lion was, 
was confiscating the drugs from the kids and taking them off. <laughs> say no, say no to drugs, kids. And then These, he's uh, selling two Smokey for five. the Bear's gone too, man. I don't see him anymore. Oh, Smokey the Bear. Who knows? Maybe he's growing marijuana in the forest. Wants to keep a low profile. Yeah. All those forest fires in California. Mm. What do you not, think started that good, shit? Uh, not good publicity. Not <laughs> good publicity. Lay low. Take it easy. Lay Go low to Tijuana. For a few years. <laughs> Go to Tijuana. Learn the trait. <laughs> <laughs> Come back. Trait. Come back. On a donkey wise. show. <laughs> <laughs> Don't ask me how. You just got to run into it. <laughs> you drinking off tequilas. And smoke, smoking off joints. You'll get there. Around 5.15 in the morning. What? <laughs> you casually say it in conversation when you're there. <laughs> hey, yeah. What a donkey show. And, and, and then like a, like some rapes just open. Just <laughs> and then the You guys have beautiful donkeys. You guys got beautiful women. I wonder if they ever, you know. No, Before you finish mind. your sentence, they open a curtain and they have the motherfucker ready to go. It's like, <laughs> oh, senor, we didn't know you like it, the donkey show. But you come to the right place. Come to the right place. We'll teach you how to grow the marijuana and how to see the donkey show. <laughs> that sounded more like Italian at the end. See the donkey show. But yeah, and then watch. He's going to come back in a few years. And then it'll be game over when my son's wearing the shirt. Hello, kids. There. Do you dare to try this? No, but um, that's funny, man. So... Yeah, I mean, as a dad, I mean, I imagine it's a bit hard. Like, even when the things that they teach at school, you know, it's getting more and more towards one side, I would assume. Um, becomes harder to, like, you know, make it happen. Um, do you think, this is on another subject, Do you? Th- what do you think about government benefits in general, you know, at, at the moment, one that's very relevant, unemployment benefits because of the whole situation a lot of people are in those benefits what do you think about them um if it's something that we, sh- we should charge tax to cover um have you had experience with them in the past and and what you, what's your outlook on that love it the best they found yes. this podcast <laughs> um <laughs> I'm sure the IRS is clear of that. <laughs> this is no, all man, I mean, it's mm-hmm. it's very difficult considering the pandemic. Because a lot of people really, really need it. I lost my job because I worked in the travel industry. So nobody's traveling. They had to let me go. So you kind of need the support to get back on your feet while there's more jobs more jobs become available but it really is a a slow grind back um not much does has become available especially in that sector where i have all my experience in so yeah uh, thankful that i I do have it although uh you know with with that how how do you take that on a case by case how do you how do you weed out who really needs it and who doesn't right like because that's always it there's people that are going to try and game the system. So it's just a matter of putting more um, checks into place so that that doesn't happen and that people aren't exploiting it. Uh, right. Yeah. The, the problem with that is that it becomes kind of like a self-fulfilling prop- prophecy where the more you try to police it, the more you end up spending as well. So, But indeed, if if we don't have a way of weeding out the ones that are going to cheat the system, then, then it's fucked. Like I had this I had this, into this conversation on my previous podcast in Spanish where I was talking about how they're letting people in Spain, like if you go into a house and you don't pay for it, you can just stay there type shit. And it's very hard for the owner to kick you out. And it's because when you become permissive, you almost start like calling people to go do it, even people that aren't in that need. Like in California, they're very permissive about you fucking just getting a tent and putting it anywhere as a homeless. They even give you like food in places and money and shit. So it's like, 
there's people that literally you can look for uh, fucking interviews in the internet where people are like, yeah, we moved from Ohio to come here and live as a California homeless. It's really cool. And it's like, <laughs> it's the whole community. Yeah. It's the whole community. <laughs> it's like, no, you need to, you need to pass a law that says that by no means anybody can just set up a fucking tent. They're setting up tents next to million, hundred million dollar houses next to Venice beach in Venice beach. So you first need to not allow it. And then all the people that are homeless, put them on, on some fucking center, some shit that you make, right? And little by little, start helping them out so that they can get their shit together and pay for their own lives and their own existence. But you need so, to close it and not allow anyone new again to set up a tent. You know, you tell them, no, you get up and you go back to where you were right before you came now. <laughs> like, so instead yeah, of sending money to individuals and setting up these i guess it's an incentive to be unemployed with for some people with how much money the government is giving out um so what would you, what do you propose send more money to people who are already homeless and setting up shelters and stuff as opposed to trying to trying to get them from not being homeless well i think that's that two different conversations unemployment? well i mean right now it's a special situation with the whole pandemic but in if we take that out of the equation first you want to help people, but the way that you help them, you have to first filter, okay, who here has mental problems, right? Get them mm. their help. Mental, who physical. Here, who here is here just because they had a bad hand dealt at one point, they were a professional, they had a job, then they lost their wife, some shit, and everything went down. All right, this guy just needs help for a few months to get back on his feet, and then he could probably get a job and start renting a place and start moving up in life, right? So you, you help those. And then there's some that are there just to fucking fuck around. So I guess you help them also for a few months and then you now fucking go live your life, you know. Become a subway artisan, whatever. Figure it the fuck out. A pan, pan artist. <laughs> a pan artist? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm uh, just saying like, but and then you would... cannot allow anyone else to become home, like to be homeless. Because if you allow people to just fucking pop up tent anywhere, then what are we talking about? But in general, I just think that when you make it permissive, then you get people abusing it more and more. So I do agree with you that it has to be policed so that, you know, it's, it's, that, it's a yeah, weird situation. That, well, to your point, that requires more money and more government oversight. So it's... Yeah, but you do have to police it. That's why, in a way, um, universal basic income, the only way that I looked at that, like something that could work, is if it replaced everything else. And then it's up Be to the individual to decide because then how best you to wouldn't have, it. You wouldn't have the problem of policing nobody because everybody's getting the same amount of money and then they decide what to do. The problem is that people want more than that. People well, what happens wanna... what happens if people spend it irresponsibly and they get to the point in their life they're 60 70 they can't work anymore or something happens that they can't work for whatever well, reason they, they still get a thousand every month right well wouldn't housing costs go up since um homeowners or i mean that or not like if you have a basic income that should be adjusted by inflation as well so they'll have the minimum amount to like rent a room and fucking buy corn dogs <laughs> get them at costco you're yeah. getting 24 you're eating for a month yeah <laughs> i mean you gotta think about that shit <laughs> you do that big box of cornflakes yeah get the biggest box of cinnamon twist cereal <laughs> get all your vitamins there that's a really healthy cereal you strategize strategize shit man Pizza tell me rolls. i got a thousand bucks to live a month you don't think i'm gonna strategize give me a 500 dollar room and with 500 dollars i buy the shit that i need a month and that's it, <laughs> that's it. watch the you... whole netflix catalog i got unlimited time <laughs> <laughs> ubi baby ubi ubi homie so <laughs> yeah it's a very difficult situation man like I, I don't, so yeah, but um, I don't know. What are well, the benefits over there in Spain? 
Because I know they're more lax, and I'm sure the government gives a lot more than what they've been giving in the U.S. I mean, they're more socialist, but also things are, are a lot cheaper. So they definitely don't give out 600 euros a, a week. You know? No, because that's that will last you. Or you can you can use that's how much they give you guys, right? Huh? That's how much Steam? we're getting. Uh, with a stimulus check, yeah, it's, it's just six hundred. It's just one. It's just one stimulus check, but the unemployment, at least for Florida, is two seventy five a week, and then recently they increased it to an additional three hundred if you have been affected by the pandemic. So that's five seventy five a week. But bro, that doesn't last you at all. For health insurance, it's easily three hundred dollars so a one week, week of support a month a month but one week of support goes to that you got kids child support in itself is a lot then you got to pay for rent then you got to pay for auto and you got to pay for auto insurance then you got to pay for gas then you got to pay for groceries so you just you're barely making ends meet so it is it is difficult figuring out how much everybody needs to to survive right like I, I think governments right now are just scrambling, trying to figure it out, trying to get the vaccines out as fast as possible, so that they don't have to deal with this anymore. Well, this if if the if we close another year, I don't see how this is like possible. Yeah. Well, the inflation's gonna go way up, right? And with the well, but they're gonna have to up. print money, and then inflation is gonna fuck us in the ass worldwide, except for China. Um. Try an asshole. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I'm too stupid. I'm too <laughs> stupid. You know, I realize I'm too stupid trying to understand, like, the GameStop, uh, stock exchange, you know. But yeah, all the whole, that whole fiasco. All I know is that there's a revolution going on by GME. The revolution. GameStop. Nah, man. I haven't I mean, bought any of that because I'm too scared that, like... As- that it's gonna start tanking and then I'll just lose my investment. I don't. I don't spend yeah, enough you, time you will. reading. You you would. Cause what lose money on that? Yeah. I don't the study people, enough to know. They do the the, the mother. I don't want to get into that. I talked about that in my Spanish podcast. If you want to listen to it but don't know Spanish, learn Spanish. All right, do something in your fucking life. Then listen to that podcast. Um, here are the broski doodles. We like to keep it a lot more simple. Okay. Uh, as you can see, me and my co-host for today, together, we add up to an average IQ of a human. So, <laughs> so, we're so that's why we get, get together, so that we can... <laughs> <laughs> we get together and we try to add it up. Um, but pretty much, some people try to bet that GameStop was going to go down. And then some kids at Reddit were you know, jerking off and got their steamy checks. And they thought, well, maybe we should buy stocks at GameStop so that the stock goes up and we can fuck over the whole scheme that the other fuckers have betting that it will go down. So it just became a battle of the nerds and the Wall Street, you know, wolves. Yeah, what I want to know is how the hell did all these guys on Reddit find out that they were short selling these specific This is all public information. Oh, yeah? So there's somebody that's just like... On the interweb, just that's what's funny. Their, that, that this homework. is not something they needed, like inside shit about. Like anybody could have known this, and obviously years and well, years. You gotta know of, how to read it, the charts and and everything. Yeah, you. I mean, you gotta know your X's and your O's. You got to. <laughs> you got to. I mean, those. <laughs> but I mean, it's not that hard if you're already into that world, you know. And this was like a forum on Reddit that already specialized in like stock trading and shit. So, do you think that it's gonna become a thing? It's gonna become a thing, but the Wall Street people are gonna start making safeguards, asking the government to pass regulations to not allow, you know, Warcraft uh, players to, <laughs> to to bet in the in the stock exchange. You know, they're gonna do their little ordeals to try to fuck the the common man from from buying a piece of the American dream. Uh, oh, but then again, bad. you know, I mean, I do you think Robin Hood is safe? You think they're going to get screwed over for, Oh no, Robin Hood is going to be sued up the ass. They're going to be sued out of existence. Um, 
they have a lot of things going on for them. One of them is that they stop allowing trading to people like you and me. And that would make the price of the stock go down. And there's people that are involved with Robinhood investors that have other businesses where they would be where it would be negative for them to have the stock go higher. So pretty much there's a conflict of interest already, right? Which shouldn't be allowed to be. Yeah, I mean, with. I don't know how that's legal. And then on the other side, for them to be able to trade with the big brokers that allow the whole, like the market makers, the big people, they need to be able to provide them with certain collateral when there's volatile exchanges like this week. And then the people at the top told brokers like smaller brokers like Robin Hood and shit like, oh, you need to put a lot of money down if you want to trade now. Pretty much letting like stopping them from being able to to trade. So the way that I looked at it is imagine that you have a little mercadito, you know, you have a little mercado, right? A little market and you have like 10, 10 little spots inside the mercadito, right? And you rent them out. Like, you rent them out to somebody so they can sell tomatoes. You rent them out to someone else that can sell whatever. And out of the 10 spots, you keep two, right? So you rent the place and you keep two of them so that you can sell fucking strawberries and mangoes. Okay. And it's like, if someone else tries to bring, for example, strawberries and mangoes and sell them cheaper, you own the fucking game. So you can tell them, hey, I'm not going to rent you the little pastico anymore. You get the fuck out of here. I'm the king of the strawberry and mango. So right now, the big hedge funds and the big security firms, they're the fucking kings of the strawberry and mangoes. And they lost a lot of money to these Reddit nerds who are actually fucking really smart. But now they're going to switch the rules of the game so that they cannot get fucked over again. And they did this back in the day with the 2008 crash where they, it was, it was a reverse. The housing market was going up, but people were shorting it. And then the big people didn't want to leave their position. Ah, I don't want to get in too deep because I'm too, too retarded to understand it. But pretty much they always have control of the game so they can tweak it to their favor. But do you think, well, I guess last time there was that many eyes on, on what happened as well. But now that there's a lot of government involved and shit and everyone's in on what's happening, do you think they'll put stops as to as to what the SEC can start doing? I don't know, Because everything that they're doing is legal, right? They just... Well, just not really. Together. The people that shorted... That no, not shorted what, what, what the Reddit people... Are. Oh, yeah, what? what the Reddit people did was legal, yeah. Yeah. But, they, but they're going to be like, game. but it's unresponsible. Uh, yeah, it's, it's fucked. Because up to recently, you couldn't really buy stocks as a mortal human being. You had to go to a broker and, like, have money and, you know, like. Yeah, it was a rich man's game. Yeah. So All I have is the scratch offs at the, at the gas station and the casino. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For us, it's just the scratch offs and. The bingo at the Mikosuki. <laughs> <laughs> That's always fun for the, you know, for the peasants. The elder, for the peasants. <laughs> you know, not in a dream. Yeah, just put us in the Coliseum, throw some bread, and we'll see a fucking lion rip somebody's head off, you know. That's, That's the us. games we're playing. That's us. <laughs> um, but yeah, so re up to recently, uh, not 2019... Robinhood, among other apps, were allowed to sell directly to people like you and me instead of having to go through other brokers and middlemen. Yeah, I actually have Robinhood. I have a couple of stocks in it. That morning, they sent a whole... I, I didn't know what was going on, but they sent a whole bunch of emails saying, uh, be careful with market volatility. There's a lot of things going on right now. We're just trying to uh, protect our customers. Yeah. So we just want you to know that not, now may not be the best time. We're just trying to protect our customers uh, so that they don't make more money than the people at the very top that, uh, you know, there are daddies. But we want to protect you from, from having them chopping your hands off. 
So <laughs> we're just it, it's for you. It's more for you than for us. It's more for you than us. Okay. Like I mean, we could we could just make money anyways, and we are. But we just want we just don't want you making more money than we thought you could have. Yeah, because then the game's flawed. Because then the game wouldn't work, right? Like if you're making more money than we saw safe for you to make, then what's the even point of the game? You know, you get it right? <laughs> it's for your protection. <laughs> so they send one email in the morning and then they send one email in the afternoon. <laughs> Updates on market volatility. It's still volatile, and, and we still want you to make money, but just not as much. But uh, very soon, uh, we'll be in a position where you can still make money, but very little, just enough so that you can keep using our app uh, and making us rich. So thank you. Yeah, here's a tip. Go to Tijuana for a week and then come back when everything is settled. Okay, that we'll way all the stock will be sold, and we can make money, more money off you. And, and if anybody says, like, oh, no, you should write a bad review about us, don't, because... We are good people. We're not doing And even if you weird. do, we're going to work with Google to remove those uh, reviews. Okay. So your efforts are, are pointless. But it's, it, of, of course, to protect you. <laughs> you, know, you don't know what you're saying right now. <laughs> you're, you're, you're not you're you right now. You're not you. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're, you're mad, and I get it. I get, I get it. it. But you're not in the right state of mind to be making these type of comments that can affect our company. You're you not know, like your friend that takes your key away so that you don't drive home because you're too drunk. All right, it's kind of like that, okay? We're just making sure that you don't. We're just making sure that you don't do things that you you're gonna regret, okay? Okay, you you're, you're a little mad right now. You gotta calm down. <laughs> so can you blame us for trying to protect you? No, we're trying to protect the customers, okay? We're trying to protect you, okay? You know what happened to you if you make all of a sudden a hundred thousand hmm? dollars? You won't know what to do with it. Huh? You you wouldn't even know. You would buy fucking an ounce of cocaine and go through some horse and die tonight. You wanna? We're protecting you. <laughs> you're gonna fund your your kids college education that never happens are you sure, <laughs> are you sure? how are you gonna get in debt S school's overrated nowadays completely so yeah so, so we're protecting you okay we're protecting you because if you make money and the people at the top find out they're gonna chop your head off <laughs> <laughs> dude if you have kids or when you have kids, would you save up money to send them to college or would you prefer a different alternative for them? Or if well, they really want college, they should save up. I think own. that by the time my kids are old enough to go to college, if we still have an earth, the concept of college is going to be very different. I think we're going to bring back like being like a welder like a forklift handler. Uh, yeah, more trade jobs. Yeah, more trade jobs. Like all that shit. Like I want to be a psychologist. Like, but you I know. don't really know. I don't really know. Like I just want to understand it myself. So maybe it's just. Like, I mean, I'm I'm making really good TikToks, and I just like analyzing people. <laughs> they say that being a psychologist is like super easy. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know, I was just thinking about it, you know, my dad, you know, he sent me here, hello, my, my daddy, hello, you know, but uh, I might just drop out. I haven't told him. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I want to, uh, I started twerking and I'm like really good. I think I have a future in it. Like, have you heard I'm of OnlyFans? really fans? good. Like the whole basketball team fucked me already. I mean, I'm really good. <laughs> You know what, bro? I, I really don't know, man. Because really I'm in that, in that point where I, I got to kind of start saving up, you know, create a... Yeah. I, like I just when you thought anyway. you didn't... You, just when you thought you could stop spending now that they're a bit older, now yeah. you're like, oh, fuck, I got to save for college. It never ends. No, no, no. The spending the spending's always there. It's just for different things. Okay. Do you, would you say that, cards, that the becomes... parenting does it ever end? Or, or just when you when you leave this plane of existence? What do you mean? Like, if I'm still parenting after I die? No, I mean, I'm hoping not. I'm saying, do you think that's when it ends? Uh, at least? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if I ever catch a break. <laughs> no, man, because then you become a ghost and you still want to, like, be like, fuck, what am I going to do? Now I got to watch out after them until they die. Damn. So it's like, it's a, it's a, it's a lifetime. No, it's. I guess past of a past lifetime contract. Damn. 
That's like yeah. that's not even like a marriage. Like till death do us part. No, this shit's after death. After death. It's like right right before you right before you leave, they request it to you in your deathbed. Like, daddy, can you please take over me, please? And then you're like, oh fuck. Can you, can you please watch over me as my angel when you're up there? It's like, oh god damn it. Lucy oh, no. is a bit about this, right? Who? Louis C.K. Oh, I don't know. I think he does. I think he has something similar. <laughs> maybe. Where maybe. Ne- it's never ending. Well, yeah, man. I, I'm in that point where I gotta. There's a bright futures programs to save up for their, their their college funds and shit. But I don't know if it's gonna be free by the time they <laughs> they go to college. I mean, I, I don't know if by, if by that time, you know. Fucking, you know, Biden. I mean, at that time, Bernie Sanders is going to be, like, Secretary of Education. <laughs> it could. It could very well be. I think I think the Biden... College should be free for everybody. <sighs> Fuck, I, I, I don't agree it should be. I no, I know, but, like... just need to bring What it about this? To... What if they just do their homeworks and they get, like, you know, the scholarship... Yeah, fund it for themselves, right? But the thing is, that yeah. can you trust a, a teenager? Job. I mean, can you trust a kid to be mature enough to understand that what he's doing is working for his future? Like, I know obviously some kids do it, but yeah, I, like, mean, I, I didn't, didn't see the implications of my actions it. when I was young. Yeah, I didn't understand it when I was young. I was like, what? I want to go to a party. <laughs> Dude, I'm trying to get my stick wet, man. I ain't trying to... <laughs> College? Bro, you saw the way Vanessa looked at me at lunch? I'm a pipe that. <laughs> Dude. I piped that last week, man. Bro, have you tried these shrooms? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wasn't... I, I didn't have a lot of foresight into... Into what... Uh, what my future is going to be like. I didn't think of the consequences of my lack of actions at certain points no, in no, my no. life. I probably should have paid attention to that their line a little bit more and try to listen to what he was saying <laughs> as opposed to smoking joints with him. I should. <laughs> at the Miami Fair Day County Fair. <laughs> oh, yeah, he was always there. <laughs> Behind that little ride that was always clicking at any moment, was going to fucking send a kid flying. To the death. <laughs> what are they? What are the carnies? They call carnies the people that work there. I don't know, man. I, I call them the death boxes. No, not the rides. The people that work there. Oh, the, oh, the fucking freaks. <laughs> With three arms. <laughs> you mean you mean the junkie freaks? <laughs> they had the best weed, though. I mean, those motherfuckers had the skunks, the skunkies of the skunks, but. But yeah, I mean, some of them were missing. I mean, you know, let's just say we was their gateway drug. <laughs> um, Yo, can we take a quick commercial break? Right, of course. So with you today, we want to bring to you the best boxers. And I'm not just saying this because I, I'm getting paid by this company, but I just really, really love their boxers. Okay. And now you can get them very, very cheap for 3% off. So if you need to go take a break, go do it while I do the commercial break. Um, pretty <laughs> much if you go on right yeah. now online and you, t- what? Throw in a what, plug bro? for me, in- hardandstonegems.com. Okay, hardandstonegems.com for uh, Adrian's Gems, okay? For me, you can get a 30% off on your first purchase of boxers. These are the type of boxers that are tight to your thighs also tight to your penis bag keeps everything in place but not too tight that it suffocates the you know the genitals so it's a very genitalia comfort uh thought out product and i want you all to buy it because for every one of those that you buy they support our show okay so go buy them today you know where to go and then click on it and then put the Broski Doodles on the discount code if you want to get 30% off on your first purchase. Thank you and go fuck yourself.
What are you doing? Taking a piss? Yeah, I was letting <laughs> letting the iguana free. A, a piss of Rooney. Yo, I, I saw some shit that you wanted to talk about Pokemon Pokemon cards. Pokemon? Is it Pokemon? Pokemon? Usted so, con su Pokemon. Dude. Yes. The That shit has been, what, 20 years now that Pokemon has been around? And mm -hmm. right now, it's come back stronger than ever. Yeah, these cards are worth thousands and thousands of dollars. What up, what up? I, I, I saw some shit on some YouTubers here in Spain that he's like, oh, I got a $300,000 card. Are these new cards? No. Well, the ones that are worth that much are the vintage cards that came out in the first set. So you get a first edition. The when? Same Charizard. 20 19, years ago? 1999. 97. Oh, but, but then how are they put in little bags? Uh, what do you mean in little bags? Because they only get them in like envelopes? Oh, because um, you have to get these cards and send them graded which is you're sending it to an organization that reviews all type of memorabilia, mm -hmm. um, baseball cards, basketball cards, you know, fucking soccer balls, whatever that have a signature on it. So then they look for authenticity, um, how well it is, how well it's been kept. <clears throat> and then they, they have their own way of sealing the card or the item and then sending it back to the person who sent it in. And then that's how you know how valuable your item is. So people have. Oh, but it's not like you can get a booster pack and get one of those. No, no, because they don't make those booster packs anymore unless somebody's held on to the booster pack all these years. So and all those hundred thousand dollar ones are all person to person purchases. Yeah, that somebody's kept in a vault. So you have any of them? Maximum security. I have, I have a deck of cards somewhere around here, with a Charizard, but it's all scratched up and shit and bent, because. I played with the cards. Um, but it's a first yeah. edition? No, not first edition. But that first edition Skyrock is uh, the, the price on that card. Uh, my son got a card not too long ago after opening a booster pack. Now that this whole craze is back. And that card, I went on eBay and found out that that card is worth 900 bucks. He doesn't okay, know so, that he's sitting on that. Okay, so, so he... So you, there are booster packs that you can buy for cars that are being made today where some of them are worth a lot of money. Right. So you have the vintage ones that came out back in 97, 98, 99. The first edition Pokemons. Back 97, 90, 96, 97, <laughs> 90. This is what, Jordan? <laughs> um, yeah, so there's some the ones that came back back in the day in the first edition um, when it was back only 151 Pokemon, not 5,000. They they had uh, like a Charizard, the OGs. You have those that are going around person to person, like we were talking about, and then there's these other packs that are coming out now with new Pokemon, and then they'll throw in some some vintage cards, not not the cards itself, but the Pokemon. So they'll create a new Pikachu card. They'll create a new Charizard card. So those are the ones that are worth a lot. And you can only find them by opening thousands and thousands of booster packs or just getting very lucky. So it just so happened that my son opened up a pack. He got lucky and got a Pikachu card that's being sold on eBay for 900 bucks. And what is your strategy? <laughs> Not telling him about it? <laughs> no, because... Right. It, it, if I tell him about it, then he's going to get all excited and he's not going to spend the money responsibly because he doesn't know, like, what he has, right? Like, that that sort of thing has to be sent over there for evaluation to make sure it's top-notch and then stored away. And then maybe hold it. Maybe even hold it for 10, 20 years like people did with their Charizards and their first edition cards. Right, so but then can... aren't you risking that by not letting him know or at least, you know, grabbing that card, that it could be damaged or lost. Well, he has it in a binder. Oh, um, so, he, so he knows it's special? Yeah. I mean, he sees the craze that's going on. So he's put them all in a binder. He just hasn't looked up the price of what it's retailing for or reselling for. But yeah, no, soon, the, the reason I haven't sent it in to get graded and to be professionally sealed and stuff is because right now they're charging... Fifty dollars, I think, maybe even more, just so that they can grade it. 
um, which is not worth it right now. And the reason it's so high is because so many people are doing this right now. It's a whole, it's a whole craze. That's crazy, man. You know, isn't it weird? Pokemon continues to still bank. Like two, three years ago, they came out with Pokemon Go, and that has kept them going for a few years more. I mean, yeah, the craze is not as crazy at the beginning, but that's just that's just still going. It is still going, and that that thing took the whole world. Like everyone in every part of the world was playing that game. And you'd go out to uh, popular spots where there would be a lot of Pokemon or Pokemon battles or whatever. And there'd be herds of people, man, just playing, trying to catch Pokemon. Everyone's staring at their phone. Do you think it's kind of funny that like, that happened at a time like, where, like, before the pandemic, like, it wouldn't have been possible? Like, it could have crashed. Like, if they <laughs> released that in January of 2020, and two months later, the whole oh, world closed it, yeah. down. That would have nah, fucked their whole business plan. Go, people still go play masked up. Fuck it. Rocket, it's Pokemon. It's Pokemon, gotta catch them all, doggy. <laughs> I'm catching Pokemon, not Rona. I'm trying to catch that Pokemon, and I'm not Rona. I feel, I mean, that's crazy, man. Uh, do you think that, are you going to get back in the Pokemon game? <laughs> the Pokemon game? Nah. Nah, you good nah with I that know shit? some people are. No, man, because you got to, there's already a whole community of people hunting down when shipments are going to come into Walmarts and Targets and stuff. So they already have their plugs that they buy out all the cards. Unless oh, you it's get already it. like too, too mafia-like. Yeah. You have to, I don't know, you have to work with card shops maybe and like go wholesale for it saying i'll give you this and then you put the other half and then we get an even bigger order from china or whatever maybe that'll be a way into it but nah man i ain't got that kind of time i got kids i got kids it's just crazy that this whole thing has come back and that company's still going strong like i don't know any other card game that has survived this long yeah Yu-Gi-Oh ain't doing it anymore right nah. magic maybe Ma magic yeah magic might be yeah, but that one's for the ages. I don't know how to play it, but I know they've been playing since like 78. Since 78? <laughs> Sounds boring. No, it's an old ass game. Yeah, it's it like is. It's from, from the 80s, if I'm not wrong. Yeah, yeah, it's it's an old school game. And what they, they, they did that very smart, too. Uh, I have a friend that was was deep in it, but the way they did it is that they would release packs every, every so couple of months. And then for tournaments, you can only play with that pack. So then the next tournament would come out and require you to buy the new pack that just came out. And then just that's how they, they continue to get people to buy them. It's never ending. All those other cards that you had, they spent thousands of dollars on become futile. They become pointless. <laughs> it's like FIFA. Buy it every year. It's for the same shitty game. All right, well... That was fun. Thanks for joining us today, Fear. That was a fun episode. Talking about this bits and that bits. Hope you enjoy it. Leave your comments below if you have any questions or any feedback that you want to pass along to the management team. And once again, I'll be with you very soon. You have the clips so that you can see clips if you don't want to listen to this whole shit. But if, you if you're already at this point, you probably listen to the whole thing. So you don't even care about the clips. In that case, I love you even more. Peace. <laughs>